Yo, once again, it's the prophet. And like I always say, if you're not down with the bullshit and you're down with the real shit, like this video and subscribe. Yo, check it out, man. I want to just be brief with this. Look, you know, in wake of the whole R. Kelly lifetime fucking surviving R. Kelly rerun special that they just keep running like a motherfucker. That just, you know, that shows that there's an agenda behind what the fuck they're doing. They want to make sure you see this shit. We're going to keep on running it. God damn, how many hours is this shit going to keep repeating again and again and again? And people might be like, well, it's about the victims. It's about the victims. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Yes, there are victims of all kind of different abuse. Um, and, that's, and that's a shame. And it's wrong. It's sick. It's sadistic. It's evil. But um, <clears throat> what I'm touching on is the fact that, look, for a lot of people who see these guys go down, these entertainers, Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, uh, it, it goes on and on and on again. You, If anybody remember, if you ever heard about the price of fame, this is the price. And I say that to say this. People don't really take it serious when they say the same people you meet going up are going to be the same people you meet going back down. The same people that made you are the same people that can break you. That's why you're supposed to really be your own person. You, you supposed That's why you're supposed to define yourself. When you go to labels as a recording artist, the, the true aspect of what is going on here is you're going to them and, say, and saying, make me famous. Okay. They're going to do what it takes to make you famous. You go to movie directors, you know, uh, you want to go be on that Broadway play or whatever, you know. Basically, the underlying thing that's what's being said here is make me famous because you know why? And also, same thing with the athletes because you know why? You could just be a regular person and still sing. You could be a regular person and still rap. You could be a regular person, still play basketball. You could be a regular person and still, you know, uh, be uh, entertaining and act out for people, you know, make people laugh, you know, uh, tell inspirational stories and stuff, you know, um, just being a regular person. But when you go to these uh, controllers of these industries and you tell them, hey, I want to be famous, they're like, okay. We're going to put the money, use the machine that we have built to make you famous. All right. When these people tell you to do certain things or not to do certain things, and you then you get into this whole, no, nah, I don't want to do that. That goes against my integrity. No, nah, I don't want to do that. Uh, that's not how I want to project myself. They're looking at you going, excuse me? It's almost like the same thing like a pimp with his hoe on the corner. What do you mean you don't want to get out there on the corner? Bitch, you wouldn't be where you at and have what you have if it wasn't for me. You owe me, bitch. When I met you, your ass was homeless. You didn't have no direction. You didn't know where the fuck to go. Your parents kick you out. Your family want shit to do with you. Who the fuck, you know... Put you in them nice clothes, even though they're clothes to basically attract men and shit like that. You know, um, yeah, you're looking glamorous because his product, what he's selling to men is your ass, is your breasts and all that. So he has to, you know, uh, enhance certain aspects of you and accentuate certain aspects of you. So he got to dress you up. The entertainment business does the same thing. Ice-T said that shit. You know, it's all about pimps and hoes. He said, it ain't nothing else. You're either a pimp or you're a hoe. And the whole thing is to understand the difference, which one you are, and be the best you can be, and be the best hoe until you can pimp yourself. That's how it is. These entertainers don't necessarily be in a situation yet where they can say, yay or nay to certain shit. They're still in that position where, like, no, nah, you got to do what the fuck we tell you, you know? Um, I 
I always all hand thought about like recording contracts are like, you know, you look at them as, you know, business arrangements. Okay, you sign for three to five years, whatever it may be, but you should have a mindset of saying, okay, at a certain point, I'm gonna go and do my own thing. You know, because why? You know, other than that, you're systematically being controlled. Uh, you could be getting millions of dollars, but you could get to a point like, damn, my music sounds stale. It sounds old. I keep doing the same shit. And I got this A&R person or this president of the record label that tells me I got to keep doing the same shit because that's what sells. But me as an artist, I don't want to keep doing the same shit. Well, you don't want to keep doing the same shit? Oh, okay. What do they do? Take your album and shelf them down, motherfucker. Okay. And they have things in those contracts that say they have a right based upon their discretion, to basically do things, throw more money at it, then turn around and tell you you owe them more money, um, pick out music selections that they want to put out, uh, people who they want you to work with, people who they want over your project, all that stuff. The whole thing about it is they look at it as the trade-off is you got the money. That's it. If you're getting that, really the money is supposed to go to them. All you got to do, if anybody remember the um, <clears throat> uh, have you seen Cadillac Records? Have you seen that scene where uh, the owner of Chess Records and uh, 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 who was that? Uh, Chuck Berry was sitting before that guy, whoever he was, um, at that distribution co company, I think it was. And the guy said, based upon uh, what you guys want to do here, I'm going to make him rich and you famous. And, and Chuck Berry was like, what? You say you're going to make him rich and, and me famous. And the guy said, yeah. He said, hold up for a minute. And Chuck Berry stood up and said, uh, let's change chairs. Because right? see, Chuck Berry, right at that instant, was like, what the fuck? Like, he understood, like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, because see, you can get the fame. After you got the fame, you have to profit off of that fame. So, you know. They make you famous. That's why you see a lot, of, a lot of entertainers, they get old, they get up there in age, they be wanting to retire, but they can't. Because why? They wind up still so-called, especially in the recording industry, or in the record company, still on money after three, four platinum albums. What the fuck kind of shit is that? You know, um, they wind up still financially um, messed up some kind of way where they have to keep performing. You know, bad business age. Everybody is trying to take the money. So you can have the fame. But everybody else trying to get the money. They don't give a fuck about that. And if you don't make their money for them, it's the same mentality as a pimp has with his hoe. You ain't no good to me then. Then fuck you. Either they're going to write your ass the fuck off and leave you for broke and shit. Or, you know what? Out of just being disdain, being out of vindictiveness and shit, and, and, and pissed off because you won't do what the fuck they say, they will destroy you so you'll never make another dime again. That's what they do. You know, and think about it. How come you can't get another deal? Because the people all are, are, are on top. They all in cahoots with each other. So all the different record label execs know each other. And when you go over there, it's just like the same thing. Like when hoes go to another pimp or whatever, how they used to be back in the day. One pimp would talk to another pimp. Hey, man, you know, your bra choose, chose me. What's up with her? You know, this and that. And it used to be like a gentleman's type agreement thing where a pimp, because the real true pimps were the guys who had mouthpieces on them. And real pimps used to say, yo, if your mouthpiece can't keep a woman and shit, and she go with another dude, hey, you respect that player for having more game than you, you know, and shit. And you keep on pushing, doing what you're doing. And if he holler at you like that and say, yo, man, what, what, like, like, like how, how's the best way to go about, you know, pimping this brawl? And he would tell her, hey, man, you know, she she responded to this. She responded to that. Boom, boom, boom. And they was because they both because why, man? We pimps. We on the same plane, man. We the dudes on the, above, and it's like a coalition. This is the same thing when people talk about the Illuminati and how they work. Look, man, check it out. Think about the whole pyramid aspect, right? You got the very few that's on top. I tell people, think about it. How does the pyramid shape? Where is it bigger at the bottom? Where is it the most small is at? The top. That means only so few people can fit on that top, right? So as it goes down, as it descends, somebody is always above somebody else. What the 
pimps and players do. What the uh, uh, all these established uh, sports leagues do. What um, all these different um, uh, 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 corporations and, and, and everything uh, uh, like that do. All these heads of these uh, entities. It's like they all form this whole um, clique. And so they're all the guys, everybody's all on one level or another, you know, and there's always somebody beneath you. That's the way it works and shit. You know what I'm saying? So the whole thing about it is if you fuck up with one of them, he talked to us, dude. He said, hey, look, don't get that motherfucker no job. That motherfucker be acting like this, doing this. He don't want to fucking give any of this. What? That's what he is? Yeah. So if he come here, oh, you telling me, oh, this motherfucker ain't going to listen. And he go, nah, he going to come over there trying to do his own thing. Oh, fuck that shit. So when you go to another level, no, your reputation gets around, nobody wants to give you a deal. So now you're wondering like, damn, man, nobody wants to sign me. What the fuck going on? You know what I'm saying? How come I can't do another movie? How come I can't get another record deal? Athletes can straight up attest it. Why can't I get uh, um, another, why can't another team pick me up? What the fuck is going on? My stats was like this last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you was all in the media talking shit, being braggadocious. You know, you probably went in your owner's office and told me, look, man. I ain't fucking coming back until my knee heals the fuck up. I know what the fuck. I don't give a fuck what the team doctors say. Yada, yada. Okay, boom. They're going to cut your ass. Then they're going to fucking lambaste your ass in the fucking press and tell everybody like, oh, he's just, you know, lazy. He just don't want to come back. And because of the simple fact that most people in the world believe in the strategy of, you know, um, TV, radio, the press, who is also owned by the top elite people in this world, the richest, wealthiest motherfucker, fuck rich, wealthy, the billionaires, not the millionaires, the billionaires. They can spend that shit how the fuck they want to. And they can spend that shit how they want to. And the the, the public at large, the mass, the mass of people, the, the sheep, remember the sheep, you Think that every damn thing on the TV and everything on that mag in the magazines and everything on that radio is true. So you know this is the price of fame, man. When you get in, shit, hey, you could blow the fuck up. You could become the next great whoever the fuck knows, singer, rapper, basketball player, football player, baseball player. And when they tell your ass to do certain shit or not to do certain shit, or let's say you fuck up, let's say you fuck up. Okay, you fuck up. You do something. Fucking around with an underage girl. Okay, got caught with cocaine or something like that, you know what I'm saying, in the car, you go back. Now, you are a cash cow for them, so they're looking like, how can we troubleshoot this shit? Remember, all the top people, and remember, wealthy guys, wealthy, the wealthiest men in this fucking world, have, who are some of their friends? Politicians. That's how they can make some of them fucking charges go the fuck away. But if you fucking don't play ball, that's why they say, remember, you have to play ball. Hey, go before the public, get this apology. Tell them that, uh, you know, um, you will never do this and do that ever again. Um, tell them you're going to donate a uh, million dollars or two million dollars to um, uh, domestic violence uh, 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 organizations. Uh, you're going to have to go um, talk to uh, a lot of uh, 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 women who've been abused and, and tell them that, you know, you're sorry. And the guy, like, I didn't abuse that fucking... I don't give a fuck that you didn't. That's not the point. The thing is, is that the way it looks, it looks bad. And, you know, if you're going to still be with us, the only way you can stay with us is if you do that shit because you represent us and you're going to make our company look bad if you don't do it. So a lot of them fucking apologies, you know, it kills me. The motherfuckers be on TMZ talking about, well, why don't they apologize? Look, man, this, this looks bad to women and this and blah, blah, blah. And this looks bad to the homosexual community and, and blah, blah, this, that. And you might say, I ain't no fucking damn uh, homophobic person, man. I, why the hell I said what I said? You don't say what, it doesn't matter. That's how the game is played. So I'm saying there's another, there's, there's another lesson to be learned here from all that shit. When you see all these famous people being taken down the way that they are. I mean, you look at how hard they be campaigning. Hard. Making sure you don't sell another record, make another dime. So, understand, man, this is the price of fame.